a topo pachico. Topo pachico. Topo pachico. We're live. I need. In the box. In the box. The pocho. What's, the box? What's in the box? Thank you, good sir. <laughs> it's so ridiculous to me that I have such a nice beer fridge in my garage. <laughs> it's just it's just so <laughs> ass and I got that fridge for four hundred dollars. That's, That's a steal. Look, Kel got my fridge Somehow he broke it in a day. Yeah. Because How? he he set the freezer to negative two. It goes oh. to negative seven. But okay. he said to negative two. I've never had it that low. I don't feel like it needs to be that low. It doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. But apparently fried the motherboard in it or it, <laughs> the controller it, board. Yeah, the controller board. Mm -hmm. It either has two weeks or two years. There's no telling. It's like <laughs> I mean that would have just been my garage fridge. Oh, that's great. We're going to get shadow from Bo chasing bugs. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm about that life. <laughs> Straight up pop. You'll see him in a zoomy stage at night. Yeah? The raptor stage just kicks in around like ten. And he's just like <laughs> Fuck it, let's go. Dude, I need to stay off Pet Finder because I keep going, mm, it might be time to get another dog. I've had several people talk me out of it. I'm not one I was of honestly going to ask you if you were thinking about it. I have been off and on thinking about it, but just I'm only of... getting another healer. Well, yeah, but just because of Pearl's current state. No, it's because Cobb's, Cabo's over 10. Oh, that too. Yeah. How no. How Don't old? bring up Pearl. Sorry. She's how not going to is... get any worse. No, she's not. But how old is Pearl Girl? Six? Five. Okay, I was close. Yeah. Half a Cabo. Half a Cabo. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, so this is name pending. This is name pending. In a garage. In in the garage, because we're expecting the rain. I'm Mike Culberson. I'm still keeper. And this is Kel... Oh, wait, no, because he didn't show up. Didn't no, show this up is to... Ginger. This hey. is Ginger. Again. It's she has me. switched from this side of the table to, to that, that side, side of the table. table. I'll let you is know there something which one's wrong better. With you? No, it's just last time we had Kelt here, and he asked, what was it swallow, spit, something along those lines? Yeah, I mean, something where we were both like, <laughs> the fuck? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, she is your guest. So, it just makes sense. Ew. What? Ew, what? Ew, Ginger. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so let's hop into talking of books. <laughs> well, but before we go talking about books, what were we talking about before? Because I wanted to Oh yeah, we got them. our furry co host. We do have our furry co host. We have was apparently going to be permanent furry co host of uh October Who's and, hiding under the cold table. Yeah, and uh Bo Duke, the the new the new um fluffy potato. Fluffy potato but who's interested in bugs. Bugs, as a puppy should be. And then I've got, as always, Cabo and Pearl. I'm bringing them everywhere with me. Yep. If I can. Forever and ever. I'm just, I'm trying to see through the mics every oh, time like I do this. I know. That's why I, <laughs> earlier I asked if we Bo! could move them. But we can't. And then I realized we can't. <laughs> Bo, what are you doing? <laughs> Distract. Being a potato. Is, can you still see him? I see a shadow. He's, oh, okay. He's. Well. He was coming over here and then either itch or bug. I think it was Bo. So yeah, distraction. And he's under. So, book talk, bro. Oh yeah, book talk. So I'm going to take it in a different direction. Um, The talking of books or the listening? The, the talking of books. Oh. Which direction? Uh, I'm going to talk about a book series. Kind of a... Kind of a... I don't normally read, well, every now and then I get the urge to read books like this, but this is like, um, I, I like to refer to them as kind of like the small stories. You know what I mean? Like the, it's not about a heroic, we're saving the world. It's just people's stories, right? Like it could be said in a fantasy world or in a sci-fi world or something, but they're just kind of slice of life stories in a, in a way, right? And the mm -hmm. small adventures, individuals' adventures, instead of, like, the world-saving adventures, right? And so I want to talk about, like, adventures, like, to the supermarket. Like, those type of adventures. Yeah, more or less. Kind of, right? Normal people adventures versus 
saving the world. Not everything has to be about saving the world. Um, I disagree. Uh, I'll tell you you're wrong, but continue. This is a psalm for the wild built monk and robot book one by Becky Chambers. Monk and robot? Monk, as in a monk. Yes. Okay. Um, and so it starts off, and you're following this monk, and as you kind of go through the story, you find out first off, it's on a moon in a different solar system somewhere, right? Revolving around the planet. You know, they've got higher technology and stuff like that. What's unique is at some point in the world, all their automated robots that were working the factories and everything rebelled, revolted. Got sentience at the same time, and then they told the pe- their people that they did, and instead of it being a huge like civil war and everything, okay. everyone was like, okay, well, what do you want to do? And the robots are like, well, we want to go off into the wilderness and just observe nature and not be disturbed. And they're like, okay, go forth and conquer. And the people made an agreement with the robots, essentially saying, hey. I think Bo's out there. Yeah, I huh. saw. Bo. So the robots go out. So they made this agreement with the robot saying, hey, you know, whenever you want to come talk to us, you're more than welcome to come talk to us, but we're not going to interfere with you. You know, you can come back to civilization anytime you want. And so it's a different take on the the robots gaining sentience because all the other ones you hear about are... Evil. Oh, they they kill everyone or the humans are evil and kill the robots or, you know, it's always a war, right? Right. So this is a different take on that. Sounds quite interesting. And and the humans are like, well, we're not going to build robots again because we don't know why these gain sentience and we're not going to, you know, have slave labor again, Mm -hmm. even on accident. And so it's, you know... 300 years after this event and 300 years after sentience yes okay and they haven't seen robots humans haven't seen robots this entire time oh wow and they've learned to do without them Mm -hmm. and they've learned to you know work with nature more and kind of integrate you know they're they're still their society is still progressing and all that jazz right but they're not they're not like polluting their planet and stuff do they have any kind of they have a bunch of technology okay you know, they've they've got they just don't have robots. Yeah, they don't have robots and okay. stuff, right? But um so we, we start off and we're following this monk, uh, and I forget their name because I'd have to open the book up, but I we're following this monk and they're like they're at and it's not like they have different they have multiple different gods instead of like our gods. Okay. Right? So whatever. Sci fi world. Um and this monk is like gets unsatisfied with their life in the monastery, and they're like, "Well, I want to do a change of career." They're like, "I want to go be a tea monk." And essentially, what a tea monk is is they travel around, and they set up shop, and then they sit down and they serve tea to people as they walk up to them, and they just listen to their problems, and they have conversations with them. It's like right? a tattoo artist. I mean, more <laughs> or less, right? It's like just it's someone for people to talk to, and it's a skill. Um, and at some point this monk gets tired of this kind of, and all they want to do is they want to hear crickets and they look up. Yeah. It's a weird thing. Right. And they, because crickets are rare on their world because of whatever. Right. So they look up where crickets are and then they go off into the wilderness. And as they're going off into the wilderness, they meet, they run into a robot who was on his way into civilization to meet with humans. Oh, interesting. They're trying to swap. And so it it goes into their interactions and it goes into, you know, identity and it goes into purposes of life um, and directions and stuff like that. Uh, I think the only beef I have with the story is they they make it very intentional that, you know, because we're talking about identity. So your main character is a they and a them. Right. They are not male. They're not female. Right. But I don't have an issue with that. What I have an, what I had an issue with, and I'm re- because I was enjoying the story, but I realized partway through, I could not picture the protagonist because they had gone so far out of their way to not imply that they looked male or that they looked female that I was struggling to enjoy parts of the story because I kept trying to picture the protagonist and I had nothing 
but they the were just visual blade, was more yeah. like amoeba. So they they went in the opposite of describing them, and and they anti described them. Yeah, pr- pretty much. They went out of their way. I mean, they're describing their personality and all that jazz, right? But I didn't know who I was looking at. Mm-hmm. You know, they would describe other characters. They would describe the robot, but the main character, they were so focused on not giving them a a, describing. a a gendered identity that they made them a just a blank spot, a white blank spot in my mind whenever I'm trying to picture the protag- protagonist. Mm. That does make it harder to read. Yeah. And it was very frustrating in that regard. I thought that the read overall was very good, and I really enjoyed the story. Again, I enjoy... Every now and then, I enjoy books that are about the small adventure. Yeah. You know, it, it, and they can be in fantastical worlds, and they can be in sci- sci-fi <laughs> worlds, but sometimes I just want to see, read a story about someone, you know, traveling around and, you know... Your normal Joe Schmo. Or... Yeah, d- you know, I read another one where they were just traveling around, dropping, like, you know waypoints for faster than light travel right and this is just like a whatever job i did the hard job getting out there slowly (laughs) well but they don't have to get out there slowly really oh you're right and they can still do it they're just dropping waypoints to make yeah no it and so realistically the job isn't a struggle they're they're you know merchants and they're freelancers and stuff like that right it just talks about the journey though it talks about the journey Mm -hmm. you know and it's these people aren't saving the world I mean, I can't imagine it being easy as a writer trying to explain something in a specific genre without putting distinguishers that we've known forever. Yeah. Like, well, they look like a person and... I mean, they just (laughs) didn't describe them at all. See, that sucks. I mean, at least say... Something. They're built... Heavy, petite, like nothing. Big, small, something. But yeah. they they very much in they very much went out of their way never to you know give them any kind of identity in that regard. Do you think maybe that was intentional so that way maybe they you could build your own idea of the character? Yes, because it's a robot, right? No, no. This one's the human. The, this is the the human. monk. Yeah, this is the monk. Okay, Pearl. Stop. That that definitely makes it interesting. I mean, it's it's a good read. And I thought, as far as the language went and and everything, it was very well done. It's just for me personally, if you don't give me anything, I needed more value. I need I need something to base their appearance off of. Describe yeah. the character to me, to, other than to imagine them. Other yeah, than even two like pronouns. hair length, hair color, something. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. But robe they, color. It was very clear color. that they were what going wearing. Yeah. yeah, it was very clear that they were going out of their way. I mean, I think they talked about their clothing at some point, right? But it's like a monk's habit, right? Yeah, so yeah. Just... A robe. Yeah, something like that. Right. That sucks. I mean, if the story's still good, that's awesome. But not being able to attain the visual of the main character, yeah, is yeah. just like, do I just? Because that's one of the things I really enjoy about the book I'm reading is the way the author goes into detail about the characters. Whoa. I mean, to me, it helps help build the story in a way. Cause... Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it helps you, you know, play it out in your brain. And when action scenes happen or it gives anything you more happens, visual. yeah. yeah you it gives can... you something to work with. Right. right. Yeah. But that's the thing is like a, a scene would be happening and I would be actively trying to picture the a white blob. Of yeah, that's, nef- that's negative, what I would a I, negative I would space picture, doing would, something. Yeah, I would picture yeah. a blank space. Yeah. You know, yeah. or a blurry face or, you know, it was just maybe it was intended to just make your own character, but they should have prefaced it with somewhere. Uh, I mean, and maybe other people could picture their own character in their that place, but like I don't read books to escape reality in a way to imagine something myself. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying the book you were reading. Oh yeah. So I've never been a good reader. Ever. Well, we'll start with book name, author if you have it. Okay. Yeah. So it's A Court of Thorn and Roses. A court? A court. Okay. 
of Thorns and Roses by Sarah Moss. Okay. Um, and it's a a series. Um, I've um, read book one, which is A Court of Thorns and Roses, and two, which is A Court of Mist and Fury. And I just started listening to today, A Court of Wings and Ruin, which is the third book. Um, three book series. No, five. Five book series. But okay. apparently another one's coming. I don't know if that's Heck true, yeah. but um, maybe, hopefully, because I'm on book three and I'm Wanting loving more. it. <laughs> yeah, already. Um, but yeah, I've never been a good reader. I've struggled with like comprehension and like reading it and understanding what I'm reading and then remembering everything that I've read. Um, but my sister started it, turned me on to it, and was like, just fucking read it, take it, read it. Try it. And it. I was like, okay, whatever. Easter weekend, I'm in the car, and I started reading, and I was like, holy fuck, I really like this book. And by the time I got to Corpus, I had read like six chapters in That's the car, awesome. which is not something I'm usually good at. Um, and then by the end of Easter weekend, I was already through like almost the entire book. Um, so yeah, I'm really loving it, and I like my new hobby. Um, but it's about the fey world. It's like fairies, magic. Okay. Um, like D&D fey or like yeah. old-timey fey? Like D&D fey. Okay. Like there are... Because there's a very real difference between like the representation of D&D fey and the representation of like, um, like Scottish Yeah, fey there's dark whatever. and then there's light. Yeah. Pretty much, you're going off lore and fantasy is two different ones. Well, so I guess there's there's kind of both okay. aspects in this, if you want to go that realm. Um, there are the good high fey, and then there are those that are evil. Um, but there are characters that are that look like bats, or characters that are bony and weird and ugly. Um, so, like, there are all different kinds of fairies. Um, but it's about a mortal female who accidentally kills one or doesn't accidentally kill one, but kills one not knowing her consequences. And then. So it's about the consequences of living with the actions that they made? Well, uh, kind of. You come to find out more about. So the fairy that went into the woods was hoping to be killed by her in hopes to break a curse. Got cast it. by an evil high fae. Um, so, like, I hope I didn't spoil anything for anybody, but that's what you've... I mean, sh- spoiler tag. Spoiler alert. Spoiler tag. I mean, it wouldn't be um, the first time. I mean, yeah. no, we, we've dropped... I mean, it's just that you don't drop the ending spoilers, right? Oh, well, I don't even know the ending spoiler yet, yeah. so... Because it's forever ongoing in the... In the universe? In the universe, yeah. I mean, you solve one problem and another... Another right? pops and, up, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, every book, basically, there's a main issue and the journey. There's a new big bad every time. Yeah. There's a new big bad and how they get to where they get to. And it's not always solving it, but at least a somewhat of an end point. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So three books in. I'm three books in. It's fairies and it's spicy and yeah, it's good. It's a good read. Oh, both your books are all about fantasy, and I'm touching a warrior's code. Well, no, mine's sci-fi, bro. Fantasy. Oh, you mean fiction? Yeah, that one. That word. <laughs> that shows you how much I read. Man, <laughs> man, I've been working on you, bro. Hey, you know, I'm getting there. I'm reading more books. I got two hours left of this book at two times speed. So, but it's it's the warrior code. It talks about the brotherhood in the military. This one specifically talking about the seals. It's by M. L. Strong, and he talks about his journey and how he got hurt and injured. So he's training the new seals at Buds, and he's doing all this, and then he gets orders. But before that, before he gets orders, he's waiting for the new chief and the new lieutenant to come in and relieve him of Hell Week for the new Buds candidates. And dude's late. 10 minutes late, 15 minutes late. He's like, I got to go. This is like our year anniversary of being together, just dating. Not married yet, because it's kind of hard to have a relationship with special forces. Or in the military period. Or in the military period. (laughs) 
God forbid you throw 265 cycle out of it. Yeah. Of not being home. So he ends up missing the anniversary, getting home. He was like, hey, I got to go back to work. I got to go to D.C. for a briefing. So he goes, goes pretty much around the world in two or three weeks, getting different people for this assignment that he had to go rescue security detail for a general that just went wrong. Army Rangers were part of it. Someone else was a part of it. And they just got ambushed down in Columbia somewhere. So I'm at the point now where it talks about how they interact with each other and how they treat brothers. And yeah, it's like, oh, fuck you, bro. I was like, yeah, fuck you too. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty standard. So, I mean, it's it shows all that, but then you'll see in here that someone's hurting and then they'll, they'll give him shit, but then they actually see he's hurting. They're like, hey, bro, what's up? Want to go have a beer? You want to talk about it? No, this is one of those, just got to suck it up in color. Like you start seeing, it's like, okay, well, we got to watch him a little bit more. What's that? A suck it up in color? Is that like a... It's just, a term. Yeah, it's okay. sometimes, you know, sometimes the uh, leadership will tell you to do something and you're like, this is fucking stupid. This isn't the right way to do it. And it's like, well, that's the orders. And you're like, all right, time to go color. Oh, meaning just do just it. Just fucking like... suck it up and okay. just embrace the suck. You yeah. got to do it one okay. way or another. Okay. So I'm at the point now where he developed his, his whole team that he wants. They don't know what the mission is. He does as lieutenant. And they're like, all right, LT, you got to tell us what we're going to do? He's like, I'll tell you tomorrow, the day of, because I can't tell you right now, because mm. loose lips sink, sink ships. So he's going through all this, and he's meeting with the officer in charge of the area of responsibility, and that's where I stop. Like, mm. oh, this is so good. Like, this is history. Wait, I'm not going to read anymore, because I hate myself. Because I, I hate myself, read. and life sucks. <laughs> And work was amazing this week. Mm, work was great. So speaking of work, I've got a fun ant- antidote for you. Antidote? Ant- antidote? Ant- antidote? Antecedent? Antidote? That word. That word. Words am hard. Um, <laughs> I uh, so I'm over. I'm I'm sitting on my desk, and I'm working and typey type, clackety clack, and I hear the airman on the other side of the desk. And they have been arguing about, like, these two new airmen have been arguing about, like, well, who gets the desk? For 20 minutes. There's only one desk and two airmen? someone moved? I I get, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that finally I got tired of it. And I got up and I went, what the fuck are y'all doing? You've been arguing over who gets the desk for 20 minutes. Y'all are grown ups. Just someone take a desk. Just take the seat. (laughs) Just take the desk. And they're like, well... You know, we can't decide. And it's like, man, just fucking decide. And they're like, well, you pick. And I was like, well, who's who in the zoo? Who's trying to decide who gets the desk? And it's like, these two. And I was like, third you, person. <laughs> you, you get the desk. And he's like, well, you know, we could trade off and blah, blah. That way, you know, we can make it fair. And I was like, you told me to pick. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. You're fucking adults now. You're not kids anymore. Life ain't fucking fair. Fucking realize it already. Um, and I'm not, I'm not fucking around. I'm not bullshitting my, my fucking coworkers, the fucking airmen, if they watch this, will, will fucking attest to the fact that this is exactly what I said. Because I was, I was like, I can listen to a lot of bullshit over the wall and just cruise by, but I cannot listen to you argue about a desk for 20 minutes. I talked, I literally had to yell at an airman to not steal food off someone else's desk. The snack what? fund, so the snack fund's in the office. So we have an open area like this, and there's snack fun back there. So just like this? Very similar size, yeah. I just, mean... Just, oh, just completely open. Just, just completely like open, this. just like this. <laughs> so he walks back there, grabs a, grabs a pop, a soda, a Coke. It's called a Coke. We're in Texas. Mm-hmm. They're all Cokes. He grabbed a pop. <laughs> I'll fucking punch you in the dick. <laughs> Promise. <laughs> grabbed a Coke. There you go. There you go. Good job. So he grabbed a Coke, comes over, he's like, oh, what is this, H-E-B? Because my coworker has a bunch of closed, sealed things on his desk for when he's hungry. So what ends up happening? He's like, oh, well, I want that, and I'll just, I'll take it. He'll be fine with it. I was like, have you ever asked him? Like, because that's stealing. What happened to integrity first? Like, do you not have any? Well, I'll just leave a sticky note then, and 
or I'll come back and talk. And I was like, no, that's still stealing. No. That's taking without So consent, the next like... time he came in the office and my coworker was there, I was like, hey, Dave, uh, this was the one that wanted to take stuff off your desk. He was like, $20. You can have two items. <laughs> he was like, I can go buy like four of those bags for $20. Well, then go do it yourself and stop trying to steal my food, jackass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, Seriously. come on. How is this hard? Is it yours? No. Don't take then it. Then ask them if they're, if you really, really have to ask. <laughs> and I can still tell you, no. Yeah. Like, I don't have to give you anything. It's my stuff. Also, there's a room. How far away? Less like, than 10 feet. Where you can go get. You can get stuff. You can get stuff. And Which, you're not going to starve. And he just or you paid could get for in the your stuff car there. And drive and go get something. Or walk across the street or, and oh, grab something. It's you're so up. hard. It's, it's a difficult life. But it's the same thing. I'll come back with lunch from the cafeteria. And 100% they'll be like, can I have a fry? No. no. Or I'll be in a salad. <laughs> Hey, can I have a buddy your salad? Fuck no. What kind That's of weirdo so weird. ass for that? Or I'll bring, I'll have my coffee made, or I'll have, like, I can we're, make all the coffee here. We're not family. We're yeah. not friends. It's like, oh, can I have a sip? No. Well, it's just a sip. You won't miss it. And I was like, why do I want your filthy <laughs> mouth on, on my, my cup? Shit. It was like, yeah. what went wrong in society to be like, Mike, can you just give me your whole beer? You opened it and you're actively drinking it, but you don't mind, right? <laughs> so, so welcome, lady and gentlemen, to the beginnings of communist society, <laughs> right? Where everything is just shared amongst everybody. We did have an airman because I had an open drink and he took it, took a sip. And I was like, get the fuck away from me. What the I hell? I'm done. I just opened. It was an actual Coca-Cola. I literally just opened it, <laughs> had the first really good sip. And it was like. Oh, yeah, that, that looks good. And me and like four other people are just staring at him. It was like, what are you doing? Did you talk to his fucking NCO? The math sergeant saw it at the time. He was like, go buy another one. Why do I have money? Go pull out money. Well, the smallest denomination is 20 bucks. Go, go pull, pull out, out money $20. and go buy him a fucking Coke. It was like, yeah. And they're like, I'm sorry, that shouldn't have happened. And no. It's like, That's no. so weird. Who does this? I'm not your family. Even even my sisters or my mom or my dad, I ask before I drink. Yeah. 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 That's, That's fucking weird, bro. The only person I think I don't ask is Sam. And, and, and who just wants to drink after randos at the office? I it's also know. different, though. Like, you and your partner have had each other in each other's mouths, yeah. tongue-wise. And it's just... Tongue-wise. Tongue <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, eh, swap and spit isn't that big of a deal. Yeah. But my kid, she'll spit back in the straw. Is like, and this That's is yours, yours now. That's yours, honey. <laughs> no, but I mean, even like if, like if Sam and I go get a coffee, I would ask to try his coffee. If we're sitting at dinner, we both have a glass of water. Okay, whatever. I'm going to drink your water because I can easily go refill it for you. And that's no big deal. It's just common courtesy. Yeah. I don't get it. It's always there. Me test daddy. <laughs> That's fucked up, bro. <laughs> but the grounded game got an update. I'm oh, excited about that. Oh, grounded an update. It got a huge fucking update, bro. New bugs. I think it's like 22 have, different items. They have new game plus. Mm -hmm. What are y'all talking about? So grounded is a, uh, a video game. Well, it's a I video game. That. It's a okay. it's a co op game. Did you ever see um what was that movie that old movie about the kids? Yeah, shrunk the kids. Yeah, Honey I Shrunk the Kids. Okay. Or think, Honey We Shrunk Ourselves. Yeah, think Honey I Shrunk the Kids, but like in a video game more in or a less. backyard okay. full of insects creatures. And you have to like fight and build stuff and That sounds cool. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. Ant piles, wasp nests. And spiders okay. are terrifying. Termites. Well, I can imagine cuz then they're gigantic. Right? Oh, they're huge. It what was crazy. And what's this is, called again? Grounded. Grounded. Okay. We thought the normal spiders were bad, and then we met wolf spiders. <laughs> and we thought wolf spiders were bad, and then we met the black widow. And it was like, uh, oh, there could nothing be worse. There's a worse. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. What's worse than a black widow? A boss spider. Yeah. A boss? It looks like a giant banana spider. Oh. Is the closest thing it Yeah, it kind of looks like, yeah. But it's called something different. Mm. And then a bunch of different things. It was like, mm, this is this is awesome. Mosquitoes are awful. 
Yeah. Mosquitoes Mos- never stop being awful. Yeah. Like for the first like four months, I didn't kill a spider at all. I was like, I'm just going to fucking build. And him and Steven are just going around killing everything. He was like, oh, I'm this level. And I was like, I cut down a whole grass forest. They leave for like 20 minutes and it just looks like desert. And once they come back, they're like, and he's like built these mega structures <laughs> that are like umpteen billion stories tall, and he's lost his mind. But yeah, massive patch for grounded. Um, I do think my favorite part was you coming back from this giant expedition. He was like, "Oh, my inventory's full," and Steven's like, "I got like two spots." He was like, "All right, cool. Now we both have one spot." And then you come back, you're like, "We should almost we're there," and Steven's like, "Yep." We can see it, and it's still like 300 meters away. Because <laughs> everywhere around is just empty. I go with deforestation hard on that game. But uh, Small Land got its uh, full release. I'm excited about that one. So that one's, it's, a, it's kind of another. But with fairies. Yeah, it's but, more but you, got, you got like fairies. Okay, cool. You know. More story. Mm-hmm. More chosen story. You, Grounded you can... kind of forces you in a story if you want to progress. Mm-hmm. Small world is just like, I mean, you can just play the stories there if you care. And I think recently, a couple news articles were saying it's supposed to, it's leading up to be the next survival arc, arc survival evolved. Mm. And I was like, I sure hope not because I don't want to pay for DLCs while it's still in beta. It's not in beta. No, I know that's what I was saying. Yeah. I don't want it to be like that. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Stardew Valley got a new release relatively recently. They're on one point six now. So I've never played through that all the way. I've never played through it all the way either. You know who did play through it all the way? Ash Daddy. Ash Daddy played the shit out of that game. This man, I fucking a he, scholar and a gentleman. He scholar he, and a gentleman. He played. He was playing like. The Farmville games and like a lot of the Facebook like farm games, and uh, I was like, oh well, I mean, if you like this, try this game called Stardew Valley. And when I say that, he got addicted to it. <laughs> he was telling Mike about the update. Yeah, <laughs> like he was addicted. Like he would show me his farms and like also, oh man, it was wild. <laughs> he invested so much time into it. I don't. I don't know what to tell you. Probably a scorpion. Awesome. Super cool. Love that. You're probably going to die. Probably. I mean, you only got like an hour ride home, right? Yeah. That'd be good. I mean, it's more like an hour and a half for you, isn't it? No. Even today with traffic, it was like an hour ten. Really? Yeah. Yesterday with traffic or the day before Uh, was horrible. Stop eating yourself. Yeah, a bunch of games are coming out. I mean, I don't know if a bunch of games are coming out. I do know a that of, a bunch of updates for games are coming out. I do out. know that I am finally getting into Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yeah, you keep talking about the that. the part two of the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yes, but I haven't talked about it on podcast. I thought you did. Cause you no, talked about don't. the first one wasn't connected to the second one. No, we talked about that in person. Oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> TBI is a hell of a thing. <laughs> I thought it was just alcohol. I wish. <laughs> Shoot, the other day I was like a cheap date. We all went out camping. I say we all went out. We went camping. I had like an eighth of what I would normally drink. Oh, man. And it, I like, might as well, I was blacked he out. He had like two fingers of whiskey and a beer. And he was like. Bye bye, keeper. Yeah. And was he was gone. just sitting in the chair with his hand in his head and his hands going, No, just leave me alone. I don't want to move. I was like, Keeper, do you want to throw up? No, I just leave me alone. I'm just going to sit here. Keeper, do you want to go to bed? No, no, just, <laughs> just let me sit here. Like, and I'm no like, idea. And everyone else is like leaving or going to bed. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm, I'm here. I was going to go home, but now I'm hanging out. <laughs> uh, I'm like, babysitting. Like, yeah, like, people are that. like on their way, like, yeah, I'm going to go to bed. Do you, you got him? Fucking sure. 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 <laughs> Um, uh, fi- finally, finally, uh, he fucking goes and he th- leans over a log and throws up. <laughs> I don't remember. I remember saying something about a belt. And then a he belt. like and being over the log, and then that's it. No. Waking flags, up the next day, he flags me down. And he's like, Mike, 
<laughs> my belt, it's magnetic. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> no, you didn't say that. You said I don't my... know what I said, but I'm sure <laughs> my I belt is the belt. It's magnetic. These are the only things you said to me, and at which point I am able to interpret drunk logic, apparently, <laughs> because I was like, do you need help button up your pants? Yeah. <laughs> so there I am, behind him, nut to butt, fucking, like, doing up his pants, like his <laughs> buttons, and buckling up You're his belt. You're so nice. A true friend well, the craziest right thing is, I drink more literally pretty much everywhere else. Yeah. I I drank more with you fucking earlier this week. <laughs> it was just like I don't know what I don't it was. Know. But then I was sick for like the next 2 days. Oh. In the middle of the week, not even like in conjunction to that. Oh, just, just like sick, not like hungover. No. Just sick. Just sick. Like I wasn't hungover the next day. I was just Oh, well that's good. And then my whole family was sick, so I don't know if my carrier monkey brought stuff in. I don't know. Fucking I was sick little. this past week. I mean, this was a couple of weeks back now, but oh. yeah, it was gross. Yeah. Sucked. <laughs> <sighs> so, but anyways, yeah, no, I'm in part two of uh, Final Fantasy VII. I'm really digging the remake. I'm digging a lot of the stuff they did. I know that there's a bunch of folks who got contention with it and all that bullshit. They can all fuck off. I think it's a fucking masterpiece. I, I would rate it up there with the fucking Witcher 3. So, since it was remastered, would you relate it to, like... It's not a remaster, it's a remake. Okay, remake. Would you say it's better or worse than the Halo remaster, Master Chief Collection? Yeah, it's better. It's definitely better. I have a question. What's the difference between remake and remaster? So, remaster is essentially just upping the graphics. Everything is exactly the same. Same story. Yeah, Yeah, everything is... a, A remake typically adds a lot more to the story. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just we're not taking the exact same thing and upping the graphics and hoping for the best. I right? got it. Goes from like new clothes to it would be like new clothes or a full makeover. Got it. Is the difference between the two. It's a good example. Yeah, I'm married. <laughs> We've been trying to get him to do a makeover for a while now. That doesn't work. My hair probably looks like shit right now. This doesn't look that bad. I mean, it definitely could be combed, maybe some product, but it's not like... There was product in it this morning. Oh, okay. How's his beard look? It could use some trimming. Yeah. I haven't trimmed it in. How's his eyebrows look? Eyebrows look fine. Mm, What about his ear hair? Mm, I can't see it from here, so no comment. What about his uh, bleached asshole? I have not seen that. Don't Mm. wish to. I don't think I want to show you. (laughs) I suntan it. Mm. What I have a back deck for in a low fence. In a kilt. In a kilt. <laughs> My neighbors somehow find this and it's like, I'm never walking out back when I hear him go out there. <laughs> hey, I mean, let's keep your privacy. Well, I mean, I know the oh. ones to my right are definitely swingers. They got the whole pineapple thing going on. I didn't know that. Yep. The upside and down pineapple? Yep. There were, there's been a couple times they've had to remove it for HOA policy. Really? Yep. It's like, hmm. Awesome. Gross. Gross. Hey, you know whatever floats your boat. I mean, yeah, yeah. You, know, you do. You do you. you do I still you, think boo-boo. it's kind of gross. I mean, I think a lot of things are gross, but yeah. if it's not with me, I don't care. <laughs> Realistically. I think it's funny. I saw my sister sent me a photo of these people who had like a pineapple car decal. I always think it's funny what people choose to like share with the world via car decal. I'm yeah. a swinger. That's why most of mine are naked cars. Unless it's a support sticker to something I actually support. Yeah. I th- I or, saw one. Or if other... he purchases a veteran's edition Tesla. A veteran's mm. edition Tesla. That's still, you got it. <laughs> so I'll tell you my side. So for once, I actually parked my car in a way where I had to look at this side of the car, the passenger side that I never look at. Mm-hmm. Never walk into that side. Normally back in. For once, I pulled in, and I walk out one morning. I was like, "Veteran edition." Oh, you actually have a veteran's edition Tesla. I mean, there's one of those, but it's not the car I have. Oh, <laughs> which will go into his piece. Oh, okay. But I walk out. I was like, "Oh, I mean, that's cool. I'm a veteran. Oh, I didn't know I bought this. I just get my car, and this has been like months. Like three months have gone by since 
the sticker appeared. I even looked through the original photos. Was like, I guess they just photoshopped it out. Like, didn't even think anything of it. Because at the same time, the CarMax logo wasn't on the back yet either. Zach was asking. And Zach asked me about it. He was like, oh, cool. You got a veteran one. I didn't know they made it for this model. I was like, neither did I. Apparently, it, it is. He was like, oh, it must be one of the 300 Elon Musk edition whatevers. I was like, I, I, I guess so. Yeah, cool. And then we're out front after the podcast or in the middle of the podcast waiting for Eddie to show up. And he's like, oh, dear. <laughs> and then he tells me. <laughs> so months ago, right? Like months ago, I had had this genius idea because I had seen it somewhere. It was a veterans edition badge that someone had put on their car. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to get that. And I'm going to put that on Keeper's Tesla. <laughs> and so one day he's here literally like starting the fire in the back before the podcast. And I sneak out to get firewood. I was going to get firewood, but while I'm out there, I took the badge and I fucking stuck it to the side of his car. Somehow straight. And I'm Good it, job, in Mike. the dark. Good job. It's as dark as it is right now, which is pitch Pretty black. Dark. Yeah. And <laughs> as I'm out there doing that, he comes walking out from the backyard over there. He's like, hey, are you having trouble getting the wood? I was like, nah, bro, just, you know, scrout, crouch down over here next to your car, not doing nothing, you know? Didn't even just, think anything of it. Just go back and load up on wood and go on, and then I forget about it. Com like, spaced on the joke <laughs> completely. Like, completely forgot about it until we're Long hanging haul. out by his car. And I was like, oh, man, did you notice the Veterans Edition? And then he goes into explaining about how it's like, yeah, no, we oh. were trying to figure out what the Veterans Edition was and uh, this and another. Yeah, apparently it's one of like 300 cars. <laughs> He's and explaining this. And I was like, it's supposedly not for this model, but it's on the car, <laughs> so I guess it is. I was like, you know, I stuck that on there. Right? I was like, this makes so much sense. <laughs> We've wasted so many fucking man hours trying to find out. <laughs> this car model and veteran edition. <laughs> and how you didn't notice it before. And how, yeah. It's just like, mm. That's funny. And that's on only one side of the car. It's not <laughs> yeah. on both sides. Which threw it even further. I was like, because <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, that's weird. It's only on one. Maybe it's a Tesla thing. I get, I don't know. <laughs> I get, and it didn't help. Good Zach prank. was like, good prank. Oh, oh yeah. man, it's so good. He's good like, prank. yeah, Tesla will just throw a badge on one side of. Oh, I mean, okay. He's yeah, had cool. A Tesla yeah. For a oh, while, okay. so <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. He's like he does all the research more than I. And I, I never cared to fact check because I, it really didn't bother me that much. I was like, oh, cool. I got a veteran edition Tesla. And that's quite funny. I like these pranks. I like good pranks like this. That was good. Like <laughs> he asked about. it. I was like, oh yeah. Apparently it's like <laughs> it's not real. knowing fully about. It. I was like, <laughs> I apparently didn't, I didn't know that there was even a veterans edition Tesla. I just thought it was fucking hilarious to slap veterans edition on there. Which is why I was just like, well, apparently this, this, this. I'm throwing out from all the research I did do. He was like, oh, I slapped it on there. It's like that makes a lot more sense because <laughs> very rarely have or ever have I seen it be on this model. Oh, that's funny. So I meant to I meant to ask you: Is your cat still accosting your partner? No, Sam. No, he stopped. He but stopped a while ago because but I he know was... for a while there it was like like I was over at your house and, and he, he the was cat just was like, like you. stalking him. You're dead like, now. And I I looked at Sam and I was like, punch the cat in the face because this is my reaction to to cat. Right? You punch cat in the face and it stops. Dobby and Dallas, no, not Dobby and Floof do not like me. They'll let me pet them, and then they'll be like, all right, that's enough. You're done, and just disappear. Now, Dallas will show me her butthole every night. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Why is that that's a cat true love. thing? It's I so hate it. It's, it's true just love. like, get your butthole away it's like, from me. oh, pet but my face. And, and then, then the butthole. 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 <laughs> and I'm Why? Like, tail down. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't, I don't want to see your butthole. <laughs> like, just God forbid yeah. you sneeze and just. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or what if it sprays? That's what I'm saying. Uh, sneeze out the butt and just. Uh, and just like, no, uh, I don't uh, like. Uh, I think that every time Dallas shows me your butthole, I was like, you think of well, fart dust uh -huh. on you. Fart dust coming out. Yes, that's why I was like, and no. Mm -hmm. Every every time my old man cat turns around, I'm like, oh fuck, that thing's crusty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What are you talking about? You don't even make it in the house. <laughs> I brought my dogs out back, and all you hear is, and he just stares at you. 
He does. Fucking intense. And then I finally walked in the house with the dogs. And then the feeder goes off. And so I move my dogs away. Your dogs can be in peace. You know, here's. It's like, stop. <laughs> it's like, he does this intentionally at this point. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. He knows what he's doing. My cat has started meowing at me recently when I come inside. And then we just have like little conversations. Yeah, I meow at my cat. I I'm pretty sure every cat owner meows at their cat, right? Like, yeah, because I... Mike was like, "Oh, you're going to meow at your cat." I was like, "I'll never meow at my cat." It was like, "Just wait." And then <laughs> I don't meow. Kind of... I do. I feel like I trill more. I go like ring more oh, yeah. at my cat than I meow at them. But I do like a hello and like a I guess like a meowing kind of. I could see I that. Know. Yeah, but I mean, Mike came over. And he was like, oh, so you're talking to your cat now, so you're an actual cat owner now. <laughs> I was like, fuck. <laughs> well, it's funny, too, because, like, Steven will come over, and my cat will meow. And both of us at the same time will go, meow. <laughs> Tell me you have a cat without telling me you have a cat. Yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> so, apparently, cats meow differently in different countries. Oh, like compared to like how you speak or what they hear? No, like their meows are different. Explain. Yes. Like like, they're... like one goes meow and the German cow goes hail Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's just the meows are slightly different. But is are like are there are their meows different because like genetically the cats are different or are the meows different because like they're hearing different language so they're I, mimicking I, different is things it like the pitch? i think that they're still trying to yeah it's like the it's pitch the or pitch something. okay i think it's i think they're still studying it i don't know this is i just interesting. Yeah, I, I would just, like to know more on this fun fact i'm just thinking in my head american cats go meow and asian cats go <laughs> God. that just reminded me of lady and the tramp we are Siamese, if you please. We are Siamese, if you don't, please. <laughs> oh, man. I just... Or the one cat, the really, really fat cat that's just like... Ding, ding, ding. Oh, oh. <laughs> With the chopsticks. With the fucking oh. chopsticks on the piano. Oh, oh fucking Aristocats. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. And I don't remember. Disney was super different yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. But, like, he's not even saying anything asian any culture no, but it's no. english making fun of asian. it's like oh my goodness and aristocats is one of my favorite disney movies i do like it actually throws a bunch of different culture yeah. stereotypes all at the same time mm -hmm. yeah um i mean obviously fox and the hound is my favorite disney movie i do like fox and the hound. i haven't seen that in a Long Sounds time. like we're doing a Fox and the Hound watch at some point. Okay. Sweet. Uh, he was born January right. 9th this year. By the way, you took him to the vet. Did you ask about spaying and neutering? And yes. How long you need um, to spaying and neutering, he's going to get snipped um, probably at six months. Okay. Depending. If he starts picking up his leg, it's going to be sooner. Because with something, to, I don't know. Something. You have to wait for them to start to descend for certain hormones. Yeah, that and then... it had something to do with the hormones. Because if aspect. you snip them too early, then they have other issues. Yeah, Correct. no, Steven's dog, Diesel, has some issues. Yeah. My cousin got rescued his female, and she was spayed too young. So now she has incontinence issues, and she has to take, I don't know, some pharmaceutical drug to help with that. But with females, you also can't wait too long to spay them. Yeah, no, yeah. Or else they, they can get, like, significant health issues then if they don't have puppies. Right. Because they build up, like, a lining in their womb or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, which I keep trying to tell my uncle, and he keeps not paying attention to me. And I'm like, you're going to get your shepherd killed. Wood, uncle? Dennis? Wood. Oh. Oh, that cuts wood. Wood. Huh. Uncle. <laughs> 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 That was so bad. I hate you so much right now. It wasn't meant to be a I dad joke. I hate you so much. It was meant to be. Oh, <laughs> oh. It's meant to be because he cuts wood. Not. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> All right. I think that's a good point to cut. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I like how that's just become a garage chair now because I've got such a superior one. See, all my old stuff either goes to the curb or goes in my garage. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> someone will say, oh, that's nice. That Where'd you get that? I was like, do you want it? Cool, get it out hey, of my house. By the way, that cabinet, is that like solid wood everywhere but the back? It was made supposedly in the 1990s. So, whatever that means. Is that like pine wood? Is the wood solid? The wood's supposedly it was solid. It's super light. When I moved it's it. probably pine or a softwood. It's supposedly solid. The reason I was asking is because I want to sand it down well, because I'm... of the finish on it. Yeah, I know the back is the original. Yeah, well, that that's that what everyone uses for the backing, right? But it's better than what they use now. Right. So what I'm going, I'll probably take that back off and I'll probably put some kind of uh, a backer on it. What? Found a giant pillow back. Um, the tiny thing wants down. Can I let it down? Yeah, you can let it down. Just keep it on the leash. You said she found a pillow back there? Yeah, she found the giant ottoman. It looks like. Oh, yeah, the ottoman that yeah. you you were like, hey, you need this in your garage. And you were very aggressively insistent that that ended up in my garage. I don't remember that. And you were correct. No, it came from Ed's. Oh, yeah. Oh, are you going to live with Cabo? Yep. <laughs> did did he uh, oh, get, get a photo, get a photo, get a photo? All right. Now that I got ish photos. That's adorable. <laughs> and distracted. As the leash goes over Cabo and he's like, what is going on? <laughs> Bobo. Hey, I just know that I need photos of Cabo and Bo for my Instagrams. 100%. My dog Instagrams. The Instagrams. 100%. Cabo, Pearl, and friends. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's catchy, right? It is. It is. It's gonna be real awkward when I kill the Cabo and Pearl. <laughs> yeah, Happy thanks for that, Mike. <laughs> What's that? I said thanks for that, Mike. Hey, you're welcome. I mean, technically they are property in the state of Texas. And you can do what you want with your property. They're property everywhere, right? Nope. What? Some states you cannot kill your own dog. What? Hmm. No, this is America. I kill what I want. Oh my god! And this when you America... say that, I love how the accent comes out. <laughs> this I is America. But how many years do you have to work for? Like five, ten years of freedom. Is it really free? What? These are the questions. You work so many years in your life. Yeah. For five, ten years of freedom. Unabated, without having to go to work. So is it really free? Define oh. freedom. Freedom changes depending on the person. Fucking Toby. <laughs> the nameplates are slowly <laughs> just moving forward. Fucking, fucking thickens down there. <laughs> Madame thickness over here. <laughs> Ugh. Make up your mind. Toby. Sit. Sit. Toby. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, fine, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Crack? <laughs> oh, look, now no. I've got all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Every, I still love it. Like, up until you got here, they were fine. And the moment you get here, I was like, Zoomy time? Watch this, Dad. <laughs> and he just goes close enough to October that Toby's just like, and is pissed at him. And he's just like, can't catch me, can't catch me, can't catch me. <laughs> and she's like trying to chase him <laughs> and getting winded. <laughs> yeah. It's like, look, Toby, you're built for stability only. No, no, that's not true. She's got a boxer in her. She's built to haul ass. She just doesn't. She doesn't. <laughs> she's built. She's, she has been right, trained to be a fatty. Right now, she's a brick. Yeah, she is a big old fatten. Which is fine. Every Friday, her and her not boyfriend are going to hang out and <laughs> her and her Cabo's got boyfriend. so many girlfriends it's not even funny like he Cabo's is a flirt who, who was the He's one dog that was brought over and just wouldn't leave Cabo alone um mm. I can't re like Cabo was just like just leave me alone like I, oh yeah who I don't know <laughs> whose dog was that there was a dog that just Cabo was annoyed of the dog Cabo would hop in our laps. And he has a, a pretty high tolerance for yeah. like for the annoyance. first little bit. Was it the 
Was it the dog you got from one mm-hmm. of the buddies at work? Mm-mm. It wasn't that one? All I know is whatever dog it was would not leave Cabo. Alone. No, the, it it was a female and she would not stop trying to flirt with Cabo. <laughs> and he was getting real sick of it real quick. It was my dad's dog, was it? Emma? Mm-mm. It wasn't when they were down? Mm-mm. I'm trying to think. Emma never met Cabo. I don't know then. Yeah, I can't remember. I, I just, know. I remember I know there, there was, was a dog. Yeah. I and, thought it was a shepherd. Oh, it was uh, Ed's daughter's dog. Yes! It wouldn't leave yes! him. Because li- oh, he brought Cabo and Pearl up there, or, and then he brought just Cabo one time, and we're in the backyard at the pool, and Cabo's just like, save me. Save me. Help, because she Papa, was desperately just trying to flirting. flirt with Cabo. And was she he was- doing the, the swish and the butt in the face? She was doing that on top of everything. She's fixed. Yeah. But they still do it. But she was still flirting. Yeah. (laughs) Trying to play with them and trying to flirt. And it was just, it was funny because Cabo was so sick. Like, he was, like, snapping at her. Mm. He was so sick of fucking getting. But don't get me wrong. He liked it for the first 30 minutes. Yeah. And then he was like. Okay, I'm over this. All right. This is old. Like, show me new tricks. (laughs) Please. And it's a puppy. But it's it's still... like when you go to the strip joint and the stripper keeps doing the same moves over and over. Mm. It's like I need to see something new. <laughs> I was in the army. We went to a lot of strip joints. Yeah, I got the dogs over here knocking the table. We went to a lot of sad strip joints sad. because we were in the army. Yeah, in the <laughs> army. <laughs> Where was the saddest strip joint? In clean Texas, Atlanta. Mm. I was gonna guess El Paso. Uh, yeah, no, but I wasn't in the army then. El Paso oh. did have the saddest strip joint that I ever went to. Because I knew it. I had a feeling. I was a contractor, and we were out there for three months, and some of the old folks were like, yeah, let's go to a strip joint. And I was drunk enough to be like, yeah, sure. Let's that, do it. That sounds like a great idea. And we went to a BYOB strip joint, which oh. you already know you're getting quality. Set in the record of quality. Up yeah. And whenever I was there, and they were like forming lines at the stripper poles, I was like, who was forming line? The customers. To to watch to the to, stages to to get lap dances at the poles. Oh, okay. It was I don't know. It oh. was not good. Hmm. Interesting. There was a lot of not good going around. There, there was a lot of I not good. I did not get a single lap dance. I just tried to chug more alcohol as fast as I could. The standard was set and the bar was really low. <laughs> They were like, do you want to pay for ice? I was like, no, I don't need <laughs> do ice. Do you want to pay fucking, for ice? <laughs> just fucking. No, because I'm sure the waters ran yeah, off I was like, gonna their say. breasts or something else. It's their bath water. Oh. Uh, man, the worst thing ever is getting up for PT at like 5.30. Pause. Raptor stage. He got my Taco Cabana cup. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. I can't. No, oh, that sucks. Bo, no, he's fine with that. <laughs> okay, but he's just like this, <laughs> waiting. Yep, there he goes. <laughs> I take, I take outside. <laughs> Did <laughs> he does disappear? There he goes. But, um, anyways, the saddest thing. Well, it's not the saddest thing, but one of the 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 sad things is you've been you've been out to the strip club until three in the morning. You get up for. <laughs> <laughs> this, he's super choked up about this dog. Yeah. The car went by and he got afraid. He got scared. <laughs> it was super scary. Boo. But at least he knows where it's safe. Mike's just going to try to scare the dog. He's unafraid. Hold again. on, let me go get a gun. <laughs> Fucking Mike! Whoa! God bless. <laughs> that scared him. <laughs> that scared Toby too. Was... <laughs> what was it, Pearl? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, both <laughs> girls are just. <laughs> so we're Go. trying to talk about strip Go clubs. <laughs> Try to talk about strippers over here and fucking dogs keep interrupting us <laughs> with their shenanigans. <laughs> hey, hey, Farva, what's that place you always like to go to? Oh, you mean shenanigans? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. 
Fuck. <laughs> I've seen that movie too many times. Um, so it's terrible getting up after going to bed at three in the morning, getting up at five thirty in the morning PT. to go to PT. Yep. Um, Everybody's probably throwing up. Probably still drunk. Um, <laughs> and then like midway through the day at lunch, you go to lay down for like the midday nap, and you put your head on the pillow. And it smells like stripper. Uh, <laughs> it's awful. It's like the worst. Like, it's like that. It built a core memory. It was so just intense. My worst memory is waking up and seeing glitter on my pillow. Oh. It was, uh, it was like, but I didn't even bring anyone home. Uh, <laughs> you just don't like, feel good about yourself. Time to burn the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously, I walked down to little grill and just burn it. And I had one of my buddies open his door. He's like, again? Really? I was like, how many times does this happen? A lot. <laughs> how many sheets have you bought? Too many. A lot. <laughs> Bobo. He's left the cup. Bo, where are you? <whistles> Go retrieve your dog. Toby, go find your little mini toy. <laughs> now we need to cut for dogs. Come on. Little potato. Potato! Oh. <laughs> Wait, we're just going right here? I'm not about that life. Bobo! <laughs> Man, if this was only out back. Oh, and then fine. they could just run around. Yep. Yeah, it's all that rain we've gotten. I know. Yeah, it's been we even a lot. put a mic over there. So far, the only thing the mic's picked up is the cup. And the dogs. And the dogs with the cup. <laughs> Pearl, have you gone to boop the mic? No. I don't think she has booped the mic. Well, yeah. she did, but before it was on. Yeah, the but dead that, cat. Yeah, the the dead cat mic. Mm hmm. Fascinating. It looks like a chew toy. It does <laughs> look like a chew toy. I want to know who named it Dead Cat. I. I don't know. That's just what it's called. It's funny. It's like we have this thing called the World Wide Web. I don't believe in that shit. That's so, just not true. So you do Taekwondo? Karate. Karate? This mm -hmm. is the same thing, right? No. Karate is uh, Japanese, right? Yep. Yeah. It's a Japanese word that means empty hands. And it's absolutely useless, right? Karate? Yeah. Um, why is it absolutely useless? Actually, so apparently, and I, I did a deep dive into this one time, but mo most of the static forms of martial arts are pretty u useless when you get them in the MMA rings. Like, they found out that a lot of the static martial arts are um, not viable when you actually go into real fights. Dark knowledge. What? I could see if you were doing something what? like... Dead cat refers to the synthetic fur covering of microphones used in video production, also known as Winma. The term comes from the movie and audio industry where large microphones used to have dead cats oh. that were about the size of a cap for smaller microphones. The term is dead kim. They used dead cats. For real, for real. For real, for real. That's fucking hilarious. So the term wow. comes from From history. real life. That's fucking great. Dark. That's a grim. I I wasn't actually expecting it. I support to be this. It, it makes it so much better. Cat. I mean, it makes it truth. I just wasn't ready for it. I guess. What was I talking about? Before? We were talking about karate. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we were talking useless. about like I I did a deep dive into like because you know the the Chinese like martial arts and you know, I've seen Ip Man and stuff like that and so yeah. I was like how viable are these martial arts in real life? And they found out that when they introduced them to actual MMA fighters, mm -hmm. the MMA fighters destroy these people. Absolutely wreck their world. Yeah. And the theory being is because they do like a lot of static training mm -hmm. and because they stat, they just, they, they only train against the same martial arts that they don't build into it any way to, you know, organically adjust. For it yeah. to be practical. For it to be practical. 
I could see that. I mean, and uh, what I mean, the only way we spar is point sparring, which mm-hmm. is basically a game of tag. Like our goal is not to once you hit knock... them at the point, and yeah, then you're done. Yeah, and and which you're, is you're, you're playing... it is great if you're using it for getting in shape. Oh as yeah, a discipline stuff like that. It is not great when people are like, "Well, I'm a black belt in karate." I'm going to go up against this MMA fighter, and then they get fucking shit wrecked. Oh, yeah. By no means do I think that um, it's just because solution. you have a black belt means that you can kick somebody's ass. Oh, and, and like that's like a lot of people's first question when they find out that I'm a black belt. They're like, oh, so you could kick my ass? And I'm like, not necessarily. I mean- you are, but how much we, do you weigh? I weigh 200 pounds. But you if we two... flip the turns, if by chance you did, you would still be charged as a deadly weapon. Yeah. Like, she just, it, it's she didn't maim because you. Because I she have. She just saved herself in self-defense, but because she's a deadly weapon. Because I have prior training. That's yep. bullshit. Uh, That's super bullshit. It's the blanket. It's But it, it's a weird, yeah. it's a weird rule. Yeah, no, I want that but, to go away. But, but then, yeah. but then, you know, there's a lot of things. What's, I think our time should... look, what's our time look like? I think we still have like seven. Time for war? No, it's not. It should seriously matter on intent for that. But Did you just stop me. Yes, <laughs> king for an issue. Yes, king for an issue. I want to use king for an issue for our last nine minutes. I did. I just wanted to put my last input on that one. Well, I'm against it. Well, fuck you. <laughs> no, continue. All right. <laughs> Ginger, king yeah. for an issue. What is one issue you see in the world that you would want to fix? Oh God, just one issue. One just, issue. just one issue. It can be small. It can be large. Um, and then we're gonna do a round robin, and we're all going to come up with our solutions for it. Okay, clean drinking water. Clean drinking water. Okay, so we'll start with you because you brought it up. Okay. See this issue all the way through. Oh, How God. do you? What do you start implementing it, or what do you do to see clean drinking water? From the beginning, from inception and, to and, closure. And we're talking about laws, and we're talking about cultural changes and stuff like that. This right? one Fuck. issue you can fix. I don't even know it, so all assuming, the different things. That, yeah, assuming that this is your plan for how, how you well, would envision I didn't envision know I was going to have to come up with all of these answers well, when no, I gave you, you an issue. It, it's completely um, on you. How would you solve it in today's mindset, your own mindset right now? You have unlimited power to fix this one issue. Hmm. I think uh, first thing I would do would, and like whatever I say. Yeah, it's there's nothing stopping you. I think we need to stop dumping into waterways. First okay. off, um, I need think um, any water that's used, any water that's going back into a main. Body of water, water runoff, a source of water. It it needs to be cleaned and filtered in some way. And these are all hypothetical. How do these would these things happen? I don't know. And, and so, when you say clean drinking water, are you saying ensuring that our drinking water stays clean, or mm-hmm. ensuring that we provide clean drinking water? Both. Okay. So, how are you providing clean drinking water for like California, which is on a shortage of water? The logistics of that, I have no idea. How that would happen? Okay. I don't know enough about sourcing. Okay, or... so I've, I've actually got a lot on this. Okay, okay. Um, Let's if, go, you, if you're done, I mean, she wants clean drinking water and everything that goes back into water source. She wants purified. I think to yeah. the proper pH balance back to what she yeah. she wants water to be clean in and out and all the bacteria whatever bad out of it. Yeah. So oil, so, chemicals, all that shit. So one of the out. things we do is we need to make people aware of. The effects that their actions have, and not just their actions, obviously, but corporate actions have on the water table. So individuals' actions, so this is cultural training in this respect, right? right. So using using your weed and feeds, everyone using weed and feeds, this negatively impacts everyone using, uh, what's the weed spray shit? Fucking Roundup. The amount Roundup. of people who everyone I hear are like, Roundup. oh, just use Roundup. And I'm like, you're It's terrible poison. by the water table. Dish soap. And laundry detergent, both good for the environment, and in comparison to Roundup and Wheat Killer, will kill and they will kill those. I and, actually disagree with you. 
I mean, there's studies on it. Because I've used those and they don't work. On killing things? Yes. Or on cleaning things? Okay. On killing things. Okay. Oh, it well, does not work. I've never had an issue with it, so this is the first I've heard of it. I've, so. I've, I've tried to use it out here to like clear the shit out of my gravel, and it did not kill that shit. Interesting. Mm. Okay. So maybe I didn't use it correctly. I was going to say, is there a specific I've, I've way you're supposed like, to like, make looked up recipes and them. stuff like that online, and I used it, and it did not kill that. Interesting. Mm. Um, but clean but, water. But culturally, um, and that ties into, you know, this kind of ties into, like, okay, we need to accept the fact that, like, neighborhoods, why don't we just accept the fact that grass is going to grow high, you know, stuff like that, you know, use native grasses, that all ties, See, ties together. I think that's a big one as well. But so that that's the cultural aspect is teaching people how to do stuff. And then how about we actually have our federal government instead of holding you and me responsible for stuff? How about they actually hold these companies that are dumping shit into our drinking water responsible for what they're doing? Instead of paying for credits instead for their of, abuse? Yeah, yes. Yes. Or you. Where is it that I think it's in? Is it? I think Cabo. a lot of places. Ah, you're in drought. Major corporations, people, you can only use this much water. Mm -hmm. Major corporations go over their they're water. Here. Yeah, in San Antonio, and there they're, was. Uh, they're was not the... penalized for it. Like what their is... gallon, instead of like if I overuse water, my water price increases. Doubles. Yep, theirs doesn't. Yeah. There was an NBA the star. Fuck? He were he did the Spurs. When we had the drought for what two years, he owed three million dollars in fines for overwater for overwatering. But he wanted his grass to look fine. He was like, "Meh, that's fine. I don't care. Here you go. I want my grass to look good." I'm sorry, I cut your water off. Agree. I'm sorry. I I will only fine you so much, and then if you keep going and we're holding you to the standard of. <clears throat> You're paying into this. This is a public service. Blah 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 blah. And don't get me wrong, I am a libertarian. However, that's with stipulations, right? Like I'm a partial, right? But I am going to hold you accountable, and I fully believe in holding corporations to a higher accountability yep. than I'm holding an individual. Yeah. No, but I agree. Now, when we go into providing water. So for places that are short on water, that are shipping in water from other states like California, we need desalinization plants. Okay. Right? Because if they can do it fucking over in the Middle East, we can do it in America. Right? But they're like, oh, it's going to negatively impact the environment and blah, 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 blah. Well, fuck off. You're, you're allowing the, the, the environment to be negatively impacted in if so many other ways. shipping in water, that also has huge negative I'm also Impact. a fan. We should get rid of water bottles and have cans. Yes. Yes. Cans let's, are cut, let's cut down on plastic. Like, I look at water in a very different way than both of you. I think all our gray water should be used for everything outside. Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, our black water, all our black water across the board should be treated, cleaned, and put yeah. back to usable. Because that would be an easy cost across the board in comparison to let's filter all water. All the water that you use in my shower, all the water I use in my dishes goes through and it stores in a water tank. But this also goes into we need to train our public more <laughs> to on... use things that could go back into your lawn and Correct. not Yeah, yeah. Try not to be dumping, you know, all your chemicals down the drain. Proper disposal of mm -hmm. of chemicals to include I don't know about you, but I've got fucking paint thinner stored somewhere in my garage right now and I need to look up where to dispose of that. Yeah. I got oil I got putting containers. Yeah, and I don't know over. where to dispose of that chemical at. most but paint see, shops will take it there's back. a lot of things that i think people just don't know right. paint batteries 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 do you, the amount of times that people just chunk batteries in the trash i'm like don't don't throw those in the trash you shouldn't do that don't throw best your buy will take batteries, batteries actually what's that best buy will take batteries yes they oh, really will. okay yep i've i literally have brought a container it up and I was of batteries like, i never even thought about it I've, I've got a mason jar that i keep in my pantry and anytime i have batteries that go dead like double A's or anything like that, they go in the mason jar, and eventually I'll get enough, and then I'll take them over to Best yeah, Buy. Have a the Bernie Dump has battery collection and liquid collection, liquid okay. like paint. oils, paint thinner, paint, spray and paint. you put it all in literally a fifty-five gallon drum. It's really, really simple business practice. Dump it in here, and then we'll seal it and we'll send it off. Right, and you just For pay proper... whatever right charge. But we're 
running out of time. What do you got for... Mine is very simple. Let's actually reuse the water that we need to reuse. If we have clean water already coming in across a majority, let's make this more public across the board. Lower, yeah. lower to a standard or increase to a standard that we can, as a whole, cover this cost. As a whole. Yeah. Now, don't give corporations credits so they can throw shit into the ocean, throw shit into water sources. No. They pay the same shit everyone else does. Yep. So we'll use our gray water and our black water will be cleaned. Or we have a collection point. Guess what happens when you hold all the corporations to a standard? They figure out how to work with it. And that's pretty much it. That's all I got. All right. Well, this has been <laughs> Name Pending. With Ginger. With, with Ginger. Uh, I'm Mike Olberson. I'm still Keeper. Uh, and I need you to fuck that like button. Throw a comment below. I'll re- I will respond. And as always, tickle, tickle that, that like subscribe. Button. Oh. Not the like button, the subscribe. Tickle the subscribe. Tickle the subscribe. I thought you said fuck the like button. I did say fuck the like button. Throw a comment below. Yep. Tickle the Tickle sub- that like button. No, the subscribe. Like. Subscribe. Fuck the like button. Fuck the like button. Tickle the subscribe. Yes. What is mm. that? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>